At least one American was hurt in the Istanbul airport terror attack. That's where 43 people were killed and more than 200 others were injured. We're getting new video from inside the airport. You see right here when the attack happened, you see the people running away from a man dressed in black. Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson says Tuesday's attack bore the hallmark of ISIS and that Americans should see more security at airports, trains and other transit centers over the 4th of July weekend. Meanwhile, we're learning that one of the bombers was reportedly a Chechen national who had traveled from an ISIS stronghold in Syria. Investigators say that the bombers have fought alongside ISIS fighters in Syria or Iraq. Holly Williams joins us on the phone from Istanbul with more details. Holly, any new details about the suicide bombers in particular? Well, Rina, Turkish media is reporting, as you just said, uh, that one of the suicide bombers was Chechen, a Russian citizen uh, who arrived from Raqqa, the so-called ISIS capital, about a month ago. Uh, two others are thought to have been from Central Asia. However, there's been no official confirmation on that front at this point. There was a police raid yesterday morning on an apartment uh, in a working class area of Istanbul uh, where the men are believed to have lived. We went to that area just a couple of hours ago, uh, and locals there told us that the men moved in about a month ago. Mm. And were they surprised when they learned about this? They were. It's an area uh, with a very heavy foreign population, uh, a lot of Arab people living there. Uh, they also said that there were lots of uh, Russians and Chechens. One local man said that his, his local area had essentially become a, a motel for foreigners, especially uh, after the Syrian civil war began uh, around uh, five years ago. But they were very surprised to learn that these men who lived in the apartment uh, may have been the suicide bombers. And do we know, Holly, anything further about what may have motivated them to detonate those suicide vests? Well, we can't say anything for sure about their motivations. And remember that at this point, ISIS has not claimed uh, responsibility uh, for this attack. But Turkish officials are saying that there are indications that this was the work of ISIS and U.S. officials uh, are saying that the evidence leans in that direction. And if indeed ISIS was the culprit, uh, it may have been that Istanbul airport, Ataturk airport, looked to them like a very ripe target, a busy airport, one of the world's busiest airports, in fact, uh, full of international travelers at pretty much any time of day. Holly Williams in Istanbul. Holly, thank you for your reporting. Joining us now is Seamus Hughes. He's deputy director of the program on extremism at George Washington University. Seamus, I want to ask you, we, Holly was mentioning about at least one of the bombers traveled from ISIS-controlled Raqqa in Syria. What do you make of the new information? Yeah, I think it's it's very interesting. You know, we've seen that um, that's the second largest con contingent of foreign fighters come from that region. About 4,000 foreign fighters from um, Russia and the former country of the Soviet Union. Um, Chechens play a prominent role. They take uh, high-level positions within ISIS. Um, that that makes sense to me. And we're also learning that one of the attackers was Chechen, and the Chechens are tied, obviously, to ISIS and other terror groups. So what is the focus right now, do you think? Why do you think we're hearing more about the Chechens this morning? You know, people that have followed this have, have always um, seen the role that, you know, Chechens and other groups like this play in this. I mean, what usually happens is foreign fighters go to um, Syria and Iraq, they get placed into a group with other um, people that speak their languages, and they move up to the ranks. Chechens are usually the old school type of thoughts when you think about foreign fighters. They have, for the most part, previous military experience. Um, they've been to Afghanistan and other places like that, um, and they rise up relatively quickly. U.S. officials had said at one point that's possible there was an agreement that was reached between Turkey and Israel. That may have actually played into the attacker's motivation. What do you make about that theory? Yeah, I, I think that, that Turkey's always been a target, or at least has been a target in recent months. Um, we've seen a number of attacks. Um, it, it may be that, that Israel and the Turkish agreement played a role into it, although your, your reporting in the previous segment talks about the month-long um, operational planning. Um, these type of things don't just happen overnight. Uh, it takes a level of, of planning, especially when we talk about three different individuals with suicide bombing uh, vest. I mean, these things uh, take a lot of time and, and effort. Seamus, what are you follow this extensively? What is it now that you're tuning in on and that get, that piques your interest at this point? Yeah, I think the most interesting part about this is you know the fact that ISIS continues to kind of reach out up to their normal territories, whether it's Paris or, or Turkey or Orlando uh, with ISIS inspired. Uh, these are people that are clearly latching out because um, they're losing ground uh, in Syria and Iraq.
Seamus Hughes in Washington. Seamus, thank you for your time. Thank you.